Hey, I'm Alex Rackler from Board Game Co. And today I'm reviewing Carnegie, a game designed by Xavier Georges and put out by Quinnette Games. And this is, well, honestly, this is going to be a bit of a tricky one. This is a game that I have found challenging to teach even in person, uh, let alone over video or a board game arena is another opportunity to play it as well. It is worth mentioning this game is available on board game arena. And this game is currently on Kickstarter. This is a prototype and this is going to be a prototype review with caveats or whatever it is. But, but let's jump, jump into it. And, and an overview. Let's start with how you score points in Carnegie, because there's a few ways you're going to score points, but the bulk of the way you score points in this game are going to come from either developing your tracks in your own tableau, which we'll explain, the, the, building out more departments in your own department, uh, getting various donations on the board, that's going to be one of the biggest areas you score points, and then networking your trains from different locations across the area, because one of the big chunks of points you can get in this game, and endgame scores can range to anywhere between 70 to 150, or somewhere in that range, and the the points in the game, a big chunk of them, up to 36 points alone can come from networking across this map. Because if you get certain key areas and you join them together, you'll be able to get up to 36 points. And it's a little more complicated than that, but that's a simplified thing. Building out each department here will be a big chunk of points, uh, unlocking the full potential of each of your four tracks, which we haven't explained yet. And then the biggest area you get points from in general is going to be your donations. This is going to reflect the fact that as the game progresses, you will have the opportunity to give up money, which rep represents your opportunity to do other other things. You can do so many different things in this game, but if you take the opportunity to give up 5, 10, 15, 20, because each time it gets more expensive, each donation is $5 more than the last one, and then you take the donation and you put it towards a variety of different goals that will give you up to 12 points each. Now, the most basic of which is going to be a straight seven points. Just plain and simple, you get seven points, so you don't have to do anything to earn it. But most of the points in the game are not going to come from something as simple as that. Rather, they're going to come from augmenting what you're doing in the game and lining that up with your donations. So perhaps you get three points for each of your research departments that you add to your board. So you get to add four research departments to your board. If you maximize research, if that's the track you specialize in, then that's where you should go for your donations as well. That interplay between trying to find those various donation tracks that will maximize and augment what you have been otherwise doing in this game is going to be a core part of the experience in Carnegie. And it is first come, first served. It's not as simple as simply going to where you did well. You have to go to where you did well before someone else went to where they did well if it overlaps with where you do well, which is would be doing well when you think about it. That's going to be a big part of the scoring in Carnegie. The actual gameplay itself is going to come down to taking 20 rounds in the game, and in each round, one player chooses the action that's going to be taken. There are four primary actions in the game. There are four different types of actions that can be taken, and the main differentiator in these actions is going to be the fact that they all activate different departments. There's going to be your research, your buildings, your management, and your HR or whatnot. I believe those are the four names of the tracks. And each of those that you, you, each of those that you activate is going to activate all your departments in that area, which is a big part of the game, because you're going to start the game with five different departments printed on your player board. You can see those over here. So you're going to start with five different departments printed on your player board, two of one type, and then one each of the other types. And then as the game progresses, you'll be able to add all these different departments. You'll be able to take from a stack of variable, variable departments that are set up at the beginning of the game, you'll be able to add them. So you can start building out your research or building out your HR, each of them giving you a competitive advantage over the other players. And the fun part is when it's your turn, you choose to choose the action that most benefits you, and ideally the action that least benefits the other players. Looking around at the other players, understanding what they are primed to do, what they plan on doing next, which number of which departments they have, what they have specialized in and what they have not specialized in, will give you the, the feedback you need in this game to figure out which action do you take, because it's not always about taking the action that is best for you. When presented with two actions, one that is really good for you and really good for other players versus one that's a little bit less good for you, but terrible for other players, go with that choice. That choice will push you further ahead of the rest, comparatively speaking, which is a bit mean and cutthroat, but also strategically sound. In Carnegie, there are 20 rounds in the game, and when it's your turn, you choose one of the actions that will be taken. And the action you choose will both determine which of the departments activate, like I said already, as well as in which region you collect income, or whether it's a donation round that round. You see, across the course of the game, there's going to be this variable track set up over here that slightly adjusts the, the sequencing of which regions activate in which order 
order and where the donations appear on the trap on the track. And there are going to be a total of eight opportunities throughout the course of the game to get a donation, to put your money towards some sort of generous donation or whatnot. And you will unlikely be actually doing eight. If you manage to get eight donations in the game, that's fairly impressive. Likely you can expect to see between three and six, I would say. Six, I think, is the highest I've personally seen. But keep in mind, I have a limited amount of plays of this game under my belt so far. I only just got the game last week and I had to get a bunch of plays in in order to do this review. And that will factor into my final thoughts, scoring, etc. and all that. And so that's going to be a big part of the unique aspect of Carnegie that's brought to the table. And this is something that's very typical for Xavier George is that every single one of his games that I have played, and I'm a big fan of his work, I'm a fan of Twa, I'm a fan of, of Gink Ginkopolis, I'm a fan of Carson City, every single one of his games that I've played have all brought something unique to the table, and Twa is going to be those dice that you can buy from other players. In Carson City, it's worker placement where you can steal the worker placement action, you can duel over those worker placement spots. Ginkopolis is almost an entirely unique puzzle unto itself. And in, in Carnegie, that unique aspect is going to be that chosen action where you determine the action that is taken by everyone and everyone will benefit. It is incredibly rare that you do not benefit from someone else's action, but how much you benefit is certainly a factor at play. And so how you build out your departments to both drive forward your unique advantage in this game, as well as how you make sure that you have enough variety that you are not at the victim of, of other players' choices is going to be a big part of Carnegie. Because a big facet of all these interplaying mechanisms that's going on in the game is going to be this aspect of sending out your workers or activating your workers in the departments. Because the departments have two ways that a worker activates. There's a passive way they activate, where simply by being there, you earn a benefit. So in this particular starting department over here, you know, let's show you on this board. In this particular starting department over here, you can choose to activate, and I, I don't expect you to see it that well there, but you can activate a worker in that department to simply take three money or a cube. And a cube is going to be the primary resource you use to build out these various departments, as well as other things in the game. And so that's a big part of the game. That's excellent. Awesome. You put a worker there, you get three money and done. Or you can choose to send the worker on a mission to send that worker to the board in order to get more money. So now you get six money or two cubes. It's a better benefit, but your worker leaves the department. But also it opens up the door for you to potentially collect income because as you progress this action track, as I said already, you're not only choosing the action, but the location where income is chosen. And so when you're able to take back a worker from the track, you will both get income for the region as well as for how far you've been able to unlock this sliding little aspect in your departments. And there's four different tracks that you can slowly upgrade and put different houses onto the board, which is how you're going to uh, integrate your map or whatnot and all that connection there. And you'll take income for, like I said, both those, how far they've extended and how many you've cleaned out, as well as for the specific action there, as well as how far you've slid up your discs on each of these tracks. There are a lot of interweaving mechanisms at play at Carnegie. And so I'm really not trying to teach you the game. John Guest Games has a great video if you want to watch that. It's a lot going on here. There's a lot. It makes a lot of sense if you actually start around and go through a few action selection, sequencing or whatnot. But trying to, to deliver that whole package in 10 minutes is it's not going to happen. And so, so that's going to be, I guess, a bit of an overview of Carnegie. Lots of different ways to score points. That action selection, the action driving forward how the game progresses, uh, building out your departments and their unique advantages, putting things on the board and upgrading both your, your research points in the game are going to be spent to slide these out, which will give you in-game points, in-game benefits as well, end-game points, as well as to move your railroads along the track, progressing in how much income you take, as well as potentially other benefits, instant one-time abilities or points or different things like that. That's effectively Carnegie condensed. So what I like about this game? Well, to begin with, the action selection, like I said already, is incredibly unique. I really appreciate, and it's pros I'm sure it's been done in other games, but none spring to mind offhand. But I really, well, it's not entirely true. I guess it's its really no, not that different than Race for the Galaxy or any sort of action selection in that sense. But in Carnegie and the heavy Euro that is integrated in, it really works very well. It might be a bit reminiscent of Puerto Rico to some degree, but that action of you driving home, of you picking a specific action that will benefit other players in different ways, not just based on timing like it does in Race for the Galaxy, Puerto Rico, or other games, but rather based on how they have built out their, their tableau, of how they have built out their company, that is going to be one of the most fascinating parts of Carnegie, the intricacies of trying to take the right action at the right time and doing it in whatever way benefits you the most. The department tiles are going to fit that classic abilities thing that I love in, well, any game really, in the sense that you're going to start with your five basic uh, departments that will go into your company, but then as the game progresses, you will have the opportunity to buy more companies, to acquire more companies and to add them or to acquire more departments that will go 
people into your companies. Each of those providing their own unique advantages, their own unique special aspect of how they can balance it. You know, you can have this human resource department, which will let you get more workers and more workers are essential. You're going to find yourself frequently running out of workers between trying to keep them here and putting them on the map. You're frequently going to need more workers. You can increase your movement variability on the board, which is important because you're constantly trying to move those workers around and get what you need. Perhaps you can do increased research, getting a single worker that will both go on a mission and give you eight research compared to the paltry three research that a basic worker will get you when you're starting department. You can slowly but surely build out your unique departments in this game, all of which will give you a competitive advantage to a degree. I say to a degree because there are duplicates. There's two copies of each tile, so there is, depending on that initial setup and how they come out, there is uh, the opportunity for other players to have the same advantage you do. But the likelihood of them having the same board, the same same configuration, the same aspect of how you are building out your company, of how you are preparing to deal with both what you plan on doing, as well as how you plan on dealing with what other people plan on doing in this game, is going to be one of the fun parts of Carnegie, building out your abilities and your unique advantage. Combining the that whole aspect here with the end game points is so satisfying. The idea that you have to build out not just an engine, but then time that engine around the donations you're going to have to get, having the money to get those donations. It's easy to have five money on hand when that first donation comes around. It is significantly harder to have 10, 15, 20, and 25 money around when it's not even your turn that is activating that donation because that is part of Carnegie, understanding that people will activate things when it is most advantageous for them and least advantageous for you. And you can lock people out of those donations when you simply slide the movement along the board to a donation action where no one else has the money to pay for the donation. And look at that. You're the only one with 10 money this round, so you will be able to jump in, get not only first access, but also an exclusive degree of access that they don't have. And so that whole balancing of not just the timing of getting those those donations, but choosing which things will complement your strategy. And, and it's going to be hard because the later you wait in the game, the more you can pick that perfect donation that fits things you've already done and the higher the chance that it's it's already gone because you waited till later in the game. You often have to double down on a strategic choice, on a, on a motion that you are taking, on a direction you are taking your company forward. You have to double down on that before you really know if that's still going to be advantageous to do so three, four rounds from now. And that's, again, it's just fun. It's part of the puzzle that Carnegie is uh, providing. I also like the fact that it's mean and opportunistic and not in a way that is so drastically punishing that it's just not fun, at least, at least not for myself. But there often are times, like I said already, it is very often advantageous to take actions that really don't benefit others as much as they otherwise could. And so that might feel frustrating to some. It certainly can be something that will be frustrating, but for myself, it's just the right amount of meanness that it falls more into the aspect of strategy and tight choices than it does into malice and just getting in each other's way for the sake of getting in each other's way. As far as what I don't like about Carnegie, there's really going to be a few things, and one of them is a big deal for me, which is the lack of variability in this game is big. As much as I like the puzzle being presented in Carnegie, coming back to it for a third play is just less tempting. And it's worth noting, I've only had two plays of this game. Like I said, I recently got this game, only had two plays before doing this review. So take that with a grain of salt or take the general idea with a grain of salt. But my first play was incredible. It's really just learning the game. Honestly, you have to, you have to go through a full game to really get the full consequences and grasp everything that's going on in the game. But the first play was great. And the second play, I dove right in. And then the third play, I'm still interested in jumping back in for a third play. Don't get me wrong. But the fact that the variability in this game is so minimal. The variability is going to come from the ordering of these tiles because there's eight of these tiles and they are all double-sided and they all present a different pathway of which region will activate their income and when the donations will come up. But it feels very minimal in its actual impact on the strategy at play. It might have slight bearing on how things play out, but the sequencing of, of the, the variable pathways I said at the beginning of the game doesn't feel like it's really presenting that different of a puzzle. Rather, the main puzzle is going to be presented by, first of all, as the game progresses and other players do things that constantly mix things up. Because people are choosing their actions, there is a decent amount of interplay in this game. But really, the main puzzle is going to be presented by the departments, having options and access to different departments. I found myself, even in game two, I found myself gravita- gravitating towards many of the same departments I built in game one because I understood understood which things seem to work together, which things coalesced with each other in in ways that were beneficial. And I can see that as you play Carnegie more, it may well become a perfect optimization game as you go for the exact same departments or the exact same combination of departments that have proven the most advantageous. And for me, for me specifically for me, 
I don't like perfect optimizations euros. I like when a puzzle is constantly changing. I like games like Vindication. I like games like Coimbra. I like games like Carson City and Twa, games that are constantly evolving the puzzle that is being presented so that every time I walk in, it feels very much like a different order, a different sequence, a different way that I have to approach that, that game. Versus perfect optimization puzzles, games like Russian Railroads, game like Pipeline, games like even Kalis to a degree, which has been a while since I played. But the more perfect the information, the more consistent the exact variables approach the table, the less I get interested over time because I, I like the constant evolution of a game. I like the constant changes in the puzzle. I don't appreciate as much that player at the table who has figured out that you need that combination to work. I like the the change, and, and so the variable in departments are going to be a big thing for me. It's so like I said, Carnegie, the biggest strike against Carnegie for me is going to be the lack of variability in the game. And again, I just want to be very clear. It's not that there's no variability, it's that the variability is on the lower end. Even those initial departments, depending on the player count, there's only going to be a subset of what's available. So there is still variability, but there's just not a ton of different departments available, and most of them will be available in most of your games. The second thing I didn't like about Carnegie is going to be the iconography and the general hard to teachness of the game. Hard to teachness is not a word. Which is the iconography in most of these departments is, is not great. It's not the worst, but some of these things, they just, I find myself constantly referencing the rule book to double check or confirm how those tiles work. And this can be a problem I have with Trois as well, by the way. Trois by, by the same designer, which is one of my favorite games. It's a, to me, it's a flaw of the game that I look past that I frequently have to check the rules to be triply sure that what I think that tile does is what I think it does because it's just it's not it's not the clearest iconography I've seen so a lot of these department tiles will constantly revolve checking the rule book and like I said already the the teach of the game is certainly on the more complicated side the the mechanisms and the way they all interweave is 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 on the longer side in terms of games that I've taught as far as I can see others not liking about this game to begin with, it's a, it's a dry Euro. If that's not your cup of tea, then that's not your cup of tea. Carnegie is very much a Euro optimization puzzle where you have to figure out how to make the most of it, how to get from point A to point B with the most points when presented with the challenges and the people as well as the, the engine that are all getting in your way. And it's a tight game. It's a game where you may not be able to get as much done as you'd like. Now, for me, that's not a problem. For me, while it does border that for me, which is why I'm bringing it up, I did feel like I was able to get enough done in Carnegie. There are some games here and there where I just, I want to get more done and I just feel the game doesn't give you enough opportunities to get it done. Carnegie gave me enough, enough feeling that I got everything I wanted to, or at least as much as I could have, but it was on the borderline, and so I can see others feeling frustrated, feeling like they need another turn or two just to get a little bit more stuff done, to get your, your departments, your research tracks extended a little further, to get a little bit more extended on this board, just to get a few more donations. I can fee see people feeling like they want to get a little bit more done in this game. Thirdly, it takes a full game to understand how to play this game, and I very much believe that. I've seen consistently, both in, from comments from other people who've played it, as well as from myself, that that first game, it was probably about like 70% of the way through the game before I really had a good understanding of how everything affected itself. And I almost wanted to start over, except we were 70% of the way through that game. Carnegie has a lot of things that really work together very well. It really does mesh together, and that second game was so satisfying. But that first game was just, okay, great, I'll do this. I have no idea the consequence of my actions. I have no idea how I'll impact myself if I take people off my company and put them onto the map. And if I do too many of that, oh, well, now I just don't have anyone here to access my departments. Well, that was a mistake. You're going to constantly be faced with the challenge of figuring out the impact of each of your decisions. Even just the aspect of taking your various houses off the board and putting them onto the map, it takes a bit of time to fully understand what you are trying to do and how to do it in a way that benefits your long-term strategy without hurting your short-term goals. It really does take most of a full game to understand the picture of what's going on in this game. And then lastly, it's just a bit of a stretch really, but giving up money in this game is going to be important. Giving up your money for those donations is going to be essential to win. If you are someone who is frequently trying to just build the best engine and you do so at the cost of your donations, you will walk away with, well, possibly the best board, but the fewest points at the end of the game. You have to be willing to give up your money, to give up the stuff that's going to let you grow in order to actually win the game with points. And that, that could be frustrating for some. As far as my final thoughts on Carnegie, while playing Carnegie, I'm inherently comparing it against some of my favorite Euros. Games like uh, Food Chain Magnet, games like Coimbra, games like uh, Xavier George's own Trois. Some of my favorite Euros are going to be what I'm weighing this game up against. And 
I will say it does a pretty decent job, except for that lack of variability. For me, I really enjoy the puzzle being presented here. I really enjoy the interplay of the mechanisms. I really enjoy the abilities of the department tiles. I would say it most feels similar to Trois from his designs, while being very, very different in many different ways. For myself, the, the the aspect that I want fixed the most is going to be the department tiles. And it's worth mentioning, I think it's essential to mention, that if you pay attention to the Kickstarter, the Kickstarter will come with literally double the amount of department tiles, which very much will give you the puzzle. It also is going to give you various donations that change up the game, so you can change the different donation tracks as well. Meaning, if you back the Kickstarter, or if you wait till retail and buy some of those additional expansions, because they will be available as expansions, then Carnegie, for me, moves majorly up in my books. My biggest strike against it is the fact that I just don't want to play the same game every single time. That's just not my personal preference for how I play games. I like the evolving puzzle. I like the changes. And with those extra tiles... Carnegie, to me, is a game that I will be adding to my collection. Because in terms of score, which is something I've been adding to my reviews recently, Carnegie in its current form, for me is a six or seven, a solid, solid game, but one that is just less enjoyable to me once you get past three, four plays because it's the same puzzle and it's just not the thing I'm looking for. But when you add in those tiles, I feel certain, and I can't say this yet because I don't have it, I don't have enough games in my belt, I don't have those extra tiles, so I am walking with a limited picture, but once you give me those extra tiles, those doubling of the department tiles, perhaps more, I don't know where the Kickstarter will end in terms of these stretch goals or whatnot, the variable donation tracks, and I don't know what else they may or may not add to the game. But for me, Carnegie, I believe, will easily be a solid eight, perhaps even higher, once I have that full picture and experience under my belt. Carnegie, like I said already, is a an intricate puzzle that is rewarding and what it's trying to do, plays in a decent enough playtime. It came in uh, on Board Game Arena. We play, I played one game in person, one game in Board Game Arena. On Board Game Arena, it took around two and a half hours. In person, it took a little under two, maybe 90 minutes, somewhere in that range, which is pretty solid for the amount of depth that this game actually gives you in its choices. That's basically it. That's my review of Carnegie. The game is available on Kickstarter. I will include a link down below. Like I said already, this is one that I am adding to my collection because of the variability that the Kickstarter adds to the to the picture of the game. And again, to be clear, those various options, those extra departments, and I believe the donations as well, will be available in retail for optional for alternatively, meaning the base game will be available on its own, and you can buy additional departments separately in retail once this game does go to retail. Hope you enjoyed this review. I hope you found it helpful. Uh, the game is available on Board Game Arena. I'll include a link to that down below. The game is available to back on Kickstarter. I'll include a link to that down below. And until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And I hope you have a good one.